tools on tech and we're going to talk about time tracking. Nobody likes to do it, but Logstick can make it a little bit easier. Logstick time tracking is all based around tasks. So if you use to do, doing, done or later, now, done, both will start tracking time as soon as you put it in. I'm working on this. So that means either the doing state or the now state. For the rest of the video, I will be using my workflow, which is to do, doing, done, but you can just replace it with later, now, done, and it will work exactly the same way. Now, how does that work in practice? If you put a task from to do onto control enter doing, then it will start tracking time. Now it doesn't keep a timer in the background. What it just means is that it writes down somewhere at what exact time you switched it to doing. And the moment I switch it back from doing to either done or to do, it will mark down when you were finished, what long the duration was and give you that information. So if I go back to this one and I say like, hey, I'm putting it back on to do, you see this little thing pop up at the end and you can hoover over it and it should show you the logbook. But if you do it the first time very often, it doesn't work. The solution is pretty simple. Go away from the page and load it again. And then the logbook shows up. And it's basically entries saying like start, finish and duration and then counts everything up into totals. Now you can also have multiple entries of course. So if you go back to doing, then it will start counting again. And then if you say back to to do, you'll see that the timer has increased to refresh the page. And then you see like two entries. This logbook entry thing isn't super useful. I don't use it very often, but you can access it in more detail by going up here and saying open with default app. That will open it in code or notepad or whatever you use. And there's the full logbook entry. I'll get to that back later because I'm using this if I want to export it to something like Toggle. So that's the basic usage, but how do I use that one in practice? Now a quick set up on how I use this on a day to day workflow and to give you like an example on how I time track while I'm working on things. So let's get back to Logseek. I'm going to go to my journal page and normally I don't use a template here, but normally I have something like this. I have like a day plan and I have log and tasks. These are the things that I usually have. Day plan is the place where I usually keep things like meetings. So say things like, Hey, got a meeting at 11. Um, and the reason why I do that is I don't want it to clog up my log because I initially tried that and it didn't work out because I was constantly having to add entries before a meeting that was going to happen later. It was just confusing. Log, I don't want to think about. The bottom row of my journal is just where I keep typing. And then for tasks, I either go through my task list. So I search for my task list. I think I have one here and I copy things. So make sure X knows everything was from a previous video. I copy that one and add it to my tasks. And then if I want to work on that, I go through my day and I say like, Hey, I'm going to work on this one. Go there, copy the link and add it here. And then say like, okay, uh, make sure X knows everything right. And then while I'm working on it, I click on this, put it on doing say writing uh, email to X. So he knows what to do um, with details. Yeah, then I keep working on writing that email. And then by the time I'm done or I get distracted, so let's say I get distracted, I go here, click this back to to do, go back one and say like a uh, coworker asking for coffee. And so that's how I go through my day. Then later, there's probably a couple of things happening here. So let's say a couple of things. And then when I want to continue work, I have two options. One is I find the ID and I, I copy it from the previous entry or from my task lists on the top. So I get it like from here or I get it from there, or I still have it in my clipboard and in windows, I use the windows V key and I got a similar setup on Linux that allows me to go back in history. This doesn't work perfectly because you need to know roughly what the unique ID was, but it will get you there. And then I can say like, okay, continue work, finished email and set. And then finally I can say like, okay, it's marked for done. And even though it's marked for done, I can now see here that there's like seconds that were added to it. And I can click on it and see like a full log of all the work that I did. So that's a really basic workflow. I mentioned it already last week when I talked about the, how I use references, but this is how I use references in combination with time tracking. Great. Now you have all these time trackings, but you might want to have a total, say for a 
project that you're working on and there's a lot of separate tasks and you need to know like hey i did 20 tasks for this project how much time did i spend on total now before i dive into queries help me out leave a comment down below to let me know what you would like to see added or changed to my videos. I'm making them for you, so I really like your feedback and have them added to my notes. I always take those things into account for future references videos that I'm building. I asked on Twitter for comments and I got a lot of good subjects to talk about, which was absolutely amazing. You guys keep it up. So right, now you have all these time track entries and you wanna get totals. And the way you do that is by making a simple query. Now, let me show you how to build one of those. I'm gonna go query, and then I get like the query set up, and I need two elements. I need to know that they are tasks, and I need to know that they are related to the project. So I do and, and that means that the next two things get combined. Open another one, I say task, and I say to do, doing, done, because I want all those status. You might add waiting. And then after that, I say like, hey, the project name that I was trying to track. Now let's see if I get everything set up correctly. I think so. So what that does, and I'm gonna make a video about simple queries and how they break up, but I say ants and then two values. One is that it has to be a task that's either to do, doing or done, and it needs to be tagged with project time track. And then when I make that into a table, what you see is that all the tasks are on the left and their track time is on the right and the total time is on the top. And so that tells you then exactly how much time you spent on this project. At the moment it's 43 seconds. In practice it will probably be more in minutes to days depending on the size of the project. Nice and simple way to see totals of a project once you're done working on it and you can report back and say like hey in total I was busy for I don't know six hours to get this done. Um, my main pet peeve there is of course I can't change time tracking and I very often forget and that's again where opening things in the default set comes in. So if I go back here and you see, for example, start and I, I missed something, then I usually go to open with default app, find the log entry that's there and then modify it here. Just remember that the duration is probably the main thing Logseek cares about. So let's say I make this six and I move this down to eight, write it down, close down this. And then as you can see, Logseek updates it and says like, hey, this was six seconds instead of eight. It's a bit cumbersome. I hope they make an editor for that, but in a pinch, you can use it to fix it. Let's get a little bit technical. This might not be useful for everyone, but I just wanted to show some of the more hackish things I do when I need to convert data. Sometimes I have log entries and I wanna copy those and import those in something like Toggle for time tracking purposes. What I do now is I go towards my list, find the entry that I wanna do, open it, and then select this text, copy, and then go to something called regex101 to break it apart and turn it into what I need. So if I paste it in here, then what you see is I get this result, which is a comma separated setup. Now I'm gonna put a link to this regular expression so Alex can use it. But really, um, it's nice that you can as a quick experiment or a quick fix. What we really need is plugins or extensions that allow us to convert these time tracking data towards something like Toggle or whatever your project management boss customer needs. So that was a quick one. Remember, you're awesome. Keep it up and see you in the next one.